Hello, this is the last exam um, I'm doing for this, at least for exam two. I think I'll definitely do this for uh, the final. It's good practice for me. And we're going over spring uh, 2016. And I'll just let you uh, be warned, even though it's not the uh, kind of question, uh, like we will not have vector um, line integrals on this, on this exam, but I cannot do question 10. So I don't have a good explanation for that right now. So if you're here for that, uh, go away come back later. So first off, question one, we have a, a polar coordinate integral. Uh, they want us to convert to polar coordinates, and we can do that for them. So let's take a look at what this, let's graph what this region is. Um, we have the, the semicircle with radius 2. So 2, 2, minus 2. And the line y equals x. This is with respect to y, so line y equals x. And x is running between 0 and root 2. So there's our area right there. And uh, you might be thinking, oh, but isn't that, uh, uh, isn't this point for x uh, root 2 over 2? No, because uh, we're on the, the, the circle with radius 2, so we have to multiply by 2 from all of our unit circle values. So we have our little area. We can set up our r dr d theta integral now. So we see that theta is running from pi over 4 to pi over 2, whereas theta is running from 0 to 2. And we know that x squared plus y squared is r squared, so this is going to be an r cubed. So integrating with respect to r, we're going to get r to the fourth over 4 on 0 to 2. At 0, this is going to be uh, 16 over 4, so 4. And uh, 4 integrated from pi over 4 to pi over 2 d theta is just going to be uh, 4 theta pi over 2 pi over 4 and solving we get 2 pi yes we get 2 pi minus pi which is pi I, I would be very embarrassed if that was wrong I had a bad feeling though okay Moving on to question two, um, find the area of the surface given by blah, blah, blah. So just the same disclaimer I keep giving for 2019's exam two, we will not have surface area integrals according to a couple of different uh, professors lectures. So um, uh, go away if you're, if you're trying to prepare, but we'll do it anyway, because we can. We know that um, the integrand of a surface area integral will be made out of fx squared plus fy squared plus 1. And we can compute that because we have our, our z equals up here. So fx is going to be 2x, and fy is going to be 1. And so we can set this guy up. We're going to have you know, our integral out here. And inside, we're going to have um, 4x squared plus 2. So we have the 1 and also this one. Uh, d x, no, sorry, d y d x, because we see we're given bounds for y in terms of x. So 0 to 4 x for y and 0 to 1 for y. So uh, integrating with respect to y, we're going to get 4 x root 4 x squared plus 2. And then integrating with respect to x, we're going to get 1 over 8 times I'm, I'm skipping steps here, but um, yeah, you check your work. Uh, 1 over 8 times 2 over 3 times 4, 4x four squared plus 2 to the 3 halves. And we can simplify out here a lot. This is just going to simplify down to 1 over 3. And we're evaluating this on 0 to 1. So at 0, it's going to be 1 third 2 to the 3 halves, and at 1, it's going to be 1 third, 6 to the 3 halves. And then if we take a look up here, let's see what they're doing. Um, they're turning this guy into 1 third, 6 root 6, minus 1 third, 2 root 2. And so if we, we you know, cancel these out, we'll get 2 root 6 minus 2 thirds root 2. 
Okay, question three, let E be the solid region in the first octant of the xy plane and below this plane. So we need a rectangular integral that satisfies all these requirements, and it looks like our order is dz, dy, dx. Well, we know that uh, all of our upper bounds should be the solutions uh, in, in the case of x. Um, sorry, I wrote this wrong. That's This is a z. Um, in the case of z, it should be z <coughs> equals something that is equal to this function. So in this case, it's z equals 4 minus y minus 2x. Um, and actually, they're not asking for c. They're asking for a and b. So it's kind of useless that we found that. But uh, it's uh, fine, because we can actually cross off some, some of these for other reasons, because we know that our inner integral should only be in terms of y and x, because it's z equals. So this guy's already out of there. And let's find b. So b should be uh, something in terms of y equals with z equal to 0. So 2x plus y equals 4. So y equals 4 minus 2x. So let's check that against b. 4 minus 2x only appears here and here. So there we go. And then for our outer integral, y and z are both equal to 0. And 2x equals 4. Solve for x. That's x equals 2. And there we go. OK, uh, we're using spherical coordinates to evaluate this thing uh, in a region above a cone and below a sphere. So let's, let's convert all these things. Our integrand is going to turn into the square root of rho squared. So rho. Um, or this cone is going to turn into root 3z equals rho. And then this sphere is rho squared equals 10. So rho equals root 10. OK, um, let's figure out what all of this means uh, graphically with a nice little coordinate, coordinate set. So we know that for every unit z that we go up, we're going to go out uh, root 3 units. So our cone is going to have an angle, as it turns out, of pi over 6 um, with respect to the, uh, the plane. So apologies for the terrible drawings as usual, but we kind of have this pretty uh, flat cone coming out of the origin and then a, a sphere cutting through it with radius, oh god, with radius, radius root 10 um, centered at the origin. And we're looking for the area in between there. So we can set up our integrals. We have enough information now, um, as, as per usual with these questions. Uh, you know, we can, we can remove our outer integral and replace it with 2 pi, because uh, d rho d phi d theta, uh, we're not dependent on theta at all. So that can go. As far as our integrand, uh, it's going to be rho cubed, because we already have a rho squared, and we added, added this rho that, that was already sitting here, sine phi. And we know that rho runs between 0 and root 10. And we know that phi, uh, phi runs between 0 and, sorry, yes, 5 or 6. Um, yeah, so pi over 3. Yes, sorry, I'm confusing myself a little bit because this this angle here is pi over 3 plus pi over 6 is pi over 2. So now we can start evaluating uh, rho to the fourth over 4 on 0 to 10 is going to be 0, whereas this is going to be, sorry, this is root 10, which is going to be 100 over 4, which is 25. And so... Uh, 25 times 2, so 50 pi, uh, integral from 0 to pi over 3, sine phi d phi. Well, the integral of sine phi is negative cosine phi on 0 to pi over 3. This guy's going to be 1. This guy's going to be negative 1 half. So overall, we get 1 half 
for that part of the integral. We bring it all the way over here, multiply by our 50 pi, and we get the answer, which is 25 pi. Okay, we have a solid material um, occupying a region enclosed by uh, the cylinder with radius 2. Um, the xy plane and uh, this dude. So it looks like we are setting up a mass, uh, an integral for mass using uh, this, this rho density function that they give us. And so let's just start converting things into uh, uh, cylindrical coordinates and see if we can figure something out. So x squared plus y squared equals 4. That's going to be r squared equals 4, which is r equals 2. So it looks like r should be running between 0 and 2. So we can get rid of that, because these all satisfy our, that condition. Um, also, taking a look at it, uh, let's see, our y squared is going to be r squared sine squared theta. But we also know that in our integrand, there will already be an r. So we're looking for an r cubed. There's an r squared. There's an r squared. So now we're down to a 50-50. And we see, uh, so so now, so now we're looking for our, our bounds for z because these both agree that it's uh, two pi, and so z, we already know that z um, z's floor should be zero, but we can also find that uh, with our x plus z equals eight that they give us up here, that z equals eight minus x, which is z equals eight minus r cosine of theta. And there we go. I'm just going to do a quick. Yeah, okay, good. Thank God. Okay, question six. We're evaluating a line integral. It's, it's weird that they're usually line integrals aren't this early in the exam, but uh, I'm not really complaining. So, uh, and this, this is the type. Nope, actually, no, this, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but we're still going to do it anyway. Might, might be on the exam, might not be. I don't really know at this point. I'm just doing the exams. So we have our r of t. We know that we're going to need our r prime of t because we have a ds in here. So r prime of t is going to be 1, 2t, 0. And that's pretty useful um, because now we can set up our integral from 0 to 1, like they say, of 12x. Well, x is just t, so 12t cosine of z. Well, z is just 0, and cosine of 0 is 1. So times 1, and then ds, which is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 4t squared, which is just going to be 1 plus 4t squared, and dt on the end. And so simplifying this down, we have 12t root 1 plus 4t squared, uh, which we can integrate pretty quickly. 12 over 8 times 2 over 3 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves, evaluated on 0, 1, is going to give us, well, let's, let's go and simplify in here. Well, this is just going to simplify down to 1. And let's see. Uh, subbing in 1, we will get 5 to the 3 halves. And subbing in 0, we will get 1. So 5 to the 3 halves minus 1 is our answer. Okay, uh, we're doing another line integral. There are a lot of line integrals on this uh, exam form. We, we're given an r of t. We're given uh, the bounds of t, so we'll just go set that up. And it's parametrized by the curve where, uh, where f is the gradient of the potential function f, where f is uh, this function. Um, if you want to see the full explanation behind uh, this method that I'm about to do, please go check out um, some of the other uh, questions labeled um, uh, line integrals uh, for in integration. Sorry, line integrals with integration under the spreadsheet. Um, that'll be uh, pretty helpful because uh, it's kind of weird. So we are going to plug in 0 for r of t, and we're going to find that that's 1, 0, 0. 
we're going to plug in pi, we're going to get 1, negative 1, 0, pi. And then we're going to go take these two uh, points and see how much our potential function changes um, as we go between these points. So 1, 0, 0 is going to give us 0. And negative 1, 0, pi is going to give us negative 2 pi. And that's our answer, the difference between these two, or how, how the function had to travel to get there. And we are correct. OK, 8. Uh, so we have an oriented curve described by the intersection of y equals x squared, blah, blah, blah. Um, we, don't, we don't particularly care because we can pull the same trick that we did in the last question and find uh, what our potential function is. So taking all of our partial, um, well, our integrals in here, we're going to get x cubed minus e to the x y squared over 2 z. That's it. That's my roommate. Um, okay, so we, we, we've got our function here. And uh, let's see, we can plug in these points, and it should uh, spit our answer out. So negative 1, 0, 1 is going to give us negative 1 minus 0 plus 1, which is just 0. And 1, 0, 1 is going to give us 1 plus 0 plus 1, which is 2. And so 8 should be C, which it is. OK, so 9 is asking for the potential function of this guy. And so we know how to find a potential function. We've been doing it the last couple uh, questions. We just have to take some uh, integrals. 2x e to the y um, is our integral with respect to x of our first component. And then 2xy e to the y plus y squared over 2 is our other component. And all we're looking for is an answer choice that has uh, the some of these and only these in it. And so if we take a look over here, we never have an x squared y, so this guy's not, not OK. We never have an xy, so that's not OK. There is a potential function. We just, we just found one of them. Um, and uh, this guy right here um, satisfies both of our. Well, sorry, it's late. I'm not. I'm not thinking very well. Um, this we we both have a two x e to the y and a y squared over two, and that is that. Okay, and ten is a question that I cannot do. Um, I've worked it a couple times and gotten uh, reasonable answers, but they're never uh, any of these. And so I guess I'll update later with the answer.